Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at question um, 241. Different ways to add parentheses. The way we'll be solving this problem is by using recursion um, and a memorization as well. So the reason why we're using recursion right here is because every time you look at a problem, it can be divided into sub-problems. So for example, if you look at this, this example right here, um, we know that this is the entire expression that needs to be calculated, but this is a sub-expression that needs to be calculated before we actually get the value for this expression. So therefore, since this problem can be broken down into smaller parts, we are using recursion. And the next part, next key part of the problem is why do we use uh, like memorization, right? And the reason why we use memorization is because when you divide up an expression into two different parts, right? Um, there, and these two different parts can have different values um, themselves when they have different placements of parentheses. So anytime you take a sub value, you calculate all the possible values that you can calculate using that expression with different placements of, of parentheses so that you don't have to calculate them again. So that's the reason why um, we'll use a hash map, which is globally accessible. Um, so, so the key type that you see here is string and the value type is a list of integers. So basically what that means is for a given expression, you can place parentheses in different uh, spots, and that will give you a list of different values will be, which will be stored in the list of integers that we see right here. Right, um, so once we have that set up, uh, we can jump into the meat of the problem. So the meat of the problem is you need to create a returning list, right? And let's call it result, and let's call it new, and it is of type array list. We can initialize that. Awesome. Um, so the next part is actually figure like iterating through all of the characters um, in the expression string. Um, so let's say for int i equals zero, i less than um, expression dot length, um, and then you increment i. Right. So. Uh, so we need to get the character value at that given index. So let's call it car c equals um, expression dot character at c uh, at i. Sorry. Yeah. And then we know that a particular um, expression needs to be divided at a given spot only if it's like a like an operation, right? A positive negative or a multiplication. So let's build another um, small helper method. Let's call it Boolean um, is expression. Uh, no, it's operation character. Um, character and let's just say char C. And basically, if C equals plus or C equals minus or C equals, uh, yeah, that's, that's a string. So we take character. If any of these values are present, and we know that only these, um, these are the possible operators. Uh, so these are the only ones that we need to care about. If it is, we return true. If it is not, we return false. Right. Okay. So if C, uh, so is operation character. So if the character that we are looking at is indeed um, an operation, we need to split that up. Um, and we need to call the split strings uh, into, um, like we need to call that, like different ways to compute. Again, so let's call it um, string left equals expression um, dot substring. Um, and we need to take from zero, so from the start to i. Um, so i, even though it is like an expression, when you take the substring method, it's um, exclusive of the end index. So uh, we need to take it as i and string left String right would be equal to expression dot substring 
of um, i plus one and when you give it only one a parameter it means it needs to go all the way to the end all right um so once we have those string values like the substring values we actually need to call this on different ways to compute so um and the returning uh type is list of integers so let's call it list um in, in, uh, integers um and let's call it what do we want to call it let's call it left uh, compute equals um different ways to compute and we pass in the left substring and we do the same for right Let's take some time to think about this, right? Uh, because it's a little complicated. So basically what you're doing here is that as soon as you have encounter an operation um, character, it means that that expression can be divided at a given spot. And then what it's doing is that when you're calling this different ways to compute, you're basically calling it recursively on the left side and the right side, and it's being divided again and again when you call um, different ways to compute and it gets you all of the values that you actually care about. So basically um, different values that you could possibly get by rearranging parentheses in different ways on the left side and the right side. So once we get those values, um, we basically need to use this combination. So for example, int, um, int L in left compute, Um, and for int r in right compute. So basically you get a list of integers, right? So those integers need to be either added, subtracted, or multiplied based on the expression, um, the, the operation character that you're looking at. So if c equals uh, positive, you would say um, the given, uh, array of integers, which is res, add this particular value that we're looking at, left plus right. And then else if uh, c equals negative, you do res dot add l minus r. And then um, else if Um, C equals multiplication, you do res dot add uh, wait, I'll multiply by R. Awesome. So once you have that, basically what you're doing is for the for a given sub expression, we have calculated all the values that you can possibly compute from the left and the right. Right, so once a for loop is complete, where does this actually close up? Okay, once all of that has been completed, what you need to do is that you need like one base ch check that we need to do. So if res dot is empty, so what exactly does this mean? That means none of the values were added into um, the the system into the list which means that the characters like the ex expression that you're looking at is like a single value expression that means like it's a single integer so what you do is um it would be res dot add um you need to parse it to in because it's in string uh parse int and then yeah, expression. Only if it is empty. That means like none of these computations have come through. That means it is a single, um, um, single cat, like single integer. Um, so that's the reason why you'll add that. And then in the end, um, you need to add it. So it would be math dot add, uh, not math dot add, math dot put expression. 
and then write. So what are you doing here? Basically, you're saying for a given expression, um, add all of the values that have computed in that so so that it can be used for something for the higher cases, not the base cases, because base cases are the ones who are actually putting in the values. And for the higher cases, they can be added. And then in the end, you just return Russ. Awesome. Let's try compiling this and see if it's okay. The first two test cases are okay. Everything else is okay as well. Awesome. So if you have any questions about this problem, please let me know in the comments below. I know this is not the easiest problem to understand, but once you walk through through it a couple of times with examples, it becomes a lot easier. Um, so if there are any other questions on the code that you'd like me to solve, also let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, it definitely keeps me motivated to make more videos. Um, thanks so much. I'll see you all soon. Peace.